Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. So today I'm going to show you why it is that I think that this machine could maybe save your life. This is a dehumidifier. And if you can hear it, it's on right now. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. That way you don't have to hear, to the, hum hear the humming. So this dehumidifier will extract up to 70 pints of water from the air every 24 hours. Only if the air around you is about 80% humid. If there's about 80% humidity in the air, right? So you would figure that for 50% or 40% humidity, you should be able to extract anywhere between 20 to 30 pints of water a day using this. Now, is the water from a dehumidifier safe to drink? Okay, and can you use this during an SHTF or a life-changing event where the power grid was down? Well, that depends on whether you have solar or not. This specific dehumidifier uses about 600 watts of power, right? And it takes about, I would say, two to three hours for it to draw about two gallons of water out of the air at around 56% to 60% humidity which is what the inside of my house averages whenever I don't have this running. So I like to have this running so that the humidity in the house stays around 40 or so. Okay, it's, uh, it just feels better. It doesn't feel muggy in the house, especially with us not having any, uh, any air conditioning, okay? Uh, so you're looking at about, for running this for about two to three hours, you're looking at getting enough water for two people for one day. And if you have a solar system where you can generate at least 600 watts of power, all right, or, you know, enough power to run this for a couple of hours, depending on how high on your priority gathering water was, this is a great option to have uh, for places where you may not be able to get water. Now, some people may say, well, if it's a life-changing event and the grid is down, then this may not be an option for you, or you may rather use your power elsewhere. Absolutely, uh, but if you have no way of getting water where you are, then this would be a very good option as long as you can power it. I'm going to bring Venezuela into the picture, okay? And I remember reading an article and seeing a news clip from Venezuela where people had to go to like a uh, natural spring to get their water because there wasn't water. The utility services weren't running, all right? So they would walk whatever distance they had to walk in order to go to the spring and get water. They still have power on and off during the day, right? So if they would have one of these, they could definitely run one of these for a few hours and get enough water. Now, I want to go over a few things. So I'm going to switch on over to a couple of uh, articles. I guess you can call them articles that I found that deal with whether consuming water from a dehumidifier is safe or not, and what to do to ensure that your water is safe if you ever have to consume water from a dehumidifier. So I'm only going to go over a couple of items on this article, but I will provide you all, <clears throat> excuse me, with the links to all of these uh, sites, okay, so that you can take a look at it for yourselves because I find it very interesting. Uh, there's only a couple of items here that I want to cover, so let's go ahead. Dehumidifiers frequently ask questions. First one is, how much water does a typical dehumidifier extract per day? Most manufacturers love to make claims of 10 to 20 liters per day on most small domestic dehumidifiers up to 50 liters on larger models. However, these figures are under extreme conditions such as 85% relative humidity at 30 degrees Celsius. The exception is with desiccant-based dehumidifiers, which give a near consistent extraction rate regardless of temperature and humidity levels. From my experience, for 60% uh, humidity at around 20 degrees Celsius, most refrigerant compressor dehumidifiers which is what I have, ladies and gentlemen, I have a refrigerant compressor dehumidifier, will remove between 30 to 40% of their capacity rating. So mine is 
rated at 70 liters per day. So let's say 30% of 70 is going to be about 21 liters. Okay. Uh, 21 liters per day, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that don't know the formula of liters to gallons, uh, I believe it's like 3.785 liters equals one gallon. All right. So 21 liters a day will come out to, well, I would say roughly between six and seven gallons of water. Okay. Uh, but that's only if your humidity is at about 60%. Okay. Uh, so for example, a 10 liter dehumidifier will remove between three and four liters per day and a 20 will remove six to eight liters a day. This is with the dial set on continuous and where the humidity remains roughly between 55 and 60% while the dehumidifier is in operation. These figures don't vary much for a few degrees higher or lower. However, the extraction rate falls significantly once the relative humidity goes down below 50%. When the temperature falls below 18 degrees Celsius, refrigerant compressor based dehumidifiers will form ice and perform periodic defrosting cycles. This drastically reduces the extraction rate. For this reason, de desiccant dehumidifiers are better suited for unheated rooms, which also provide background heat. All right, and then I also wanted to go through Well, let's see real quick here. All right. I'm not going to go over, over how much it costs to run because if you're in some kind of a crisis mode where you really need water and you still have electricity or you have the uh, availability of electricity, either through solar, through wind, through hydro, through whatever source you may have that's off grid, uh, you're not going to really care about how much it costs to run a dehumidifier. For everyday use, yes. Uh, but for an emergency situation, you're not going to care how much it costs. Okay, this is the other one I want to get to. Is the collected water safe for drinking? And it says here, unfortunately, besides the water collected, dehumidifiers collect all sorts of airborne particles, including mold spores, viruses, pollen, bacteria, and so on, making it unfit for consumption. There are dehumidifiers in the market designed for this purpose, usually called something like air to water appliances. These have special filters designed to remove dust UV, and UVC lamps to kill the germs to make the water uh, suitable for consumption. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not telling you all to start drinking your dehumidifier water, okay? Understand that. I'm telling you what I would do in a dire situation where I needed water because I could not have it. I could not find it. I could not gather it. I could not collect it. All right. Maybe we have a month or two month stretch where there's just no rain and and the pumps that I go to have stopped running and there's no other way for me to get water. As long as I have power or a way to get power, I can run my dehumidifier for a few hours a day, just enough to gather a couple of gallons of water that will help to uh, provide me and my family with the water that we need to sustain life okay uh, now this is what I would do okay let me go ahead and uh, go to another one here that it's very interesting and it says here can I use my Berkey water filtration system to purify water from my home dehumidifier okay and this is from Berkey all right and I'll leave this uh, link to this article as well and it says dehumidifiers that use refrigeration will have cold metal tubes to turn water vapor from gas to a liquid. According to the EPA, stagnant con condensate water can harbor biological contaminants, including mold, mildew, algae, especially in the collection bucket if it's not cleaned regularly. These contaminants have the potential for causing disease, such as hypersensitivity, pneumonia, and humidifier fever. Evaporation trays in the air conditioner, humid dehumidifiers, and refrigerators should also be cleaned frequently. Moreover, the condensate can contain lead and other metal residues from the component parts of the dehumidifier. Unlike distilled water, dehumidifier water is never sterilized through boiling, so we do not recommend this. And now it says, 
The black Berkey purification elements are capable of removing the various potential contaminants that are typically found in the humidifier water. However, NML, NMCL always recommends the cleanest water source possible and does not recommend using the humidifier water in your Berkey system on a regular basis. However, if no other water source is available during an emergency, the water from a dehumidifier could be used on a short-term basis only. Normal tap water or rainwater are best to use in your Berkey system. So ladies and gentlemen, even though they don't recommend that you do this on a normal basis, which I don't know why anyone would, right? Use their dehumidifier water when water is available to them, just like they get it out of the tap every day, right? But in an emergency, it actually states here that the Berkey uh, purification elements, the Berkey filters will make dehumidifier water safe for you to drink on a short-term basis. Now, what would I do if I was in this situation where I needed to use it? There will be a few things that I do before I actually drank that water or allow my family to drink that water or use it for cooking. First thing that I would do is, is I would filter that water through the Berkey system, okay? After I filter the water through the Berkey system, I would boil that water. After I boil that water, uh, let's say I have a gallon of water, I would put eight drops of bleach into that one gallon of water, which is the amount of bleach that you need per gallon of water, all right, to make it potable, right, to kill whatever organisms there may be in there. Once I put my eight drops of bleach in that gallon of water, I'll shake it around and I'll let it sit for about an hour so that the chlorine and the bleach in the water will evaporate into the air. That way you don't have to taste so much uh, chlorine when you drink the water or use it for cooking. To me, that would be a reasonable amount of precautionary steps taken to ensure that that water is clean, all right, and safe to drink, all right? The last thing I'm gonna leave you all with is gonna be this other link over here where it's, uh, it's also about the Berkey and it says Berkey water filter lab test results. What does it remove? And uh, it actually compares it to other filtration systems and things like that, which I'm not gonna go over, but what I really want you to concentrate on here, if you come to this site is down here where it says, what does Berkey water filtration remove, All right? And it tells you everything that it removes and the rate at which it removes it. So for example, I'll go over a few fluoride, uh, removes m greater than 99.9%. .9%. Now, I do believe that this is only if you buy the fluoride filter attachments, okay? Uh, it removes viruses, uh, lead, arsenic, iron, mercury, chlorine, uh, THMS. I'm not going to try to pronounce that, all right? Uh, chloramines, pharmaceuticals, petroleum. I read that Berkey even removes gasoline out of the water, oil. Uh, out of the water, diesel fuel out of the water, so that's actually great, all right? Uh, let's see, it removes pesticides, heavy metals, E. coli, it even removes uranium, all right? So I think the Berkey water filter is a great system. Hey, listen, if you guys are in the market to buy a Berkey water filtration system, before you spend the $350, $400, go ahead and take a look at the video that I did, if you haven't seen it, where I built a homemade Berkey system using the Berkey filters, all right, the actual authentic Berkey filters, uh, along with a spigot and a couple of buckets, uh, food grade buckets. And you can actually make your own system, uh, an actual five gallon system uh, for about half, if not less than half, than what you would pay for the Berkey uh, family size system. All right. I think that project ended up costing about $150 or so to make a five-gallon Berkey filtration system, uh, which is more of a capacity than, than your biggest Berkey system right? that they have. I think the biggest one they have is like four gallons or four and a half gallons, something like that. Don't quote me. But it produces just as good water uh, than the actual Berkey store-bought system. The only thing is, is that you have two food grade five gallon buckets instead of two stainless steel uh, reservoir and bucket that it comes with. All right, that's the only difference.
all right so go check that out if you guys would like other than that ladies and gentlemen we're going to try to keep this one short because it is a short video but i think that the information in the in this video is worth uh taking a look at and doing a little bit of your own research that way if you ever find yourself in a situation where water is just not available but you have electricity or a way to get electricity that you can still produce water if you have a dehumidifier all right so having said that ladies and gentlemen thank you very much thank you very much to our new patreons out there all right so thank you guys for joining patreon if you haven't taken a look at my patreon page go ahead i usually post the videos on my patreon page from both of my channels uh, from alaska prepper channel and the alaska prepper news channel if you haven't checked out the alaska prepper news channel uh, go over there and check it out and if you like it go ahead and subscribe all i do there is this i just put up one or two articles per day about news that is current and or relevant all right so if you want to check that out you can go check that out uh, also thank you very much for all of your support ladies and gentlemen if you'd like to continue to support the channel just take a look at the links below uh, probably the easiest way to support the channel is to like comment share and if you want to donate about 30 seconds of your time uh, let an ad or two run through because that really helps other than that ladies and gentlemen i truly do hope that you guys had a great fourth of july all right i hope that you all stayed safe made smart decisions and uh, i hope you're doing well today and hope you have a good weekend all right uh, so remember to be good to each other when good people do good things good things happen remember to reach one teach one and repeat if we all did this the world would be a better place and you know that it will be a better place many blessings to all of you and your families this is alaska prepper and i'm out